After we completed crossovers and time alignment, tuning of the system, consisting of a three-way system in the front, a two-way system in the rear, and a subwoofer, I can move on. Virtuoso Channel EQ allows to perfectly tune the frequency response for each emission front of the system. Let's start activating Multi-SE to select tweeters, mids, and woofers belong to the three-way system in the front. Since the system is running in IIR mode, the graph shows evident holes introduced by crossovers phase rotations at the crossing points. To fix that, we can rotate by 180 degrees the phase of the mids, or alternatively, both tweeter and woofer phase. Adding the subwoofer, we note that the curve remains almost linear even in the lower end. With the support of a professional RTA analyzer, I can use channel equalizer to linearize the acoustic response in the car cabin for each emission front. In IIR mode, 11 EQ poles are available that can be assigned as parametric, notch, or all pass. I can move the poles in the graph with the mouse or by modifying the three sliders at the bottom to adjust the intervention frequency, the gain, and the Q factor. I can also use the keyboard to set the values. Notch poles are useful to correct a resonance that could be present in the car's cabin. First or second order all pass poles are useful in the crossing frequencies points to compensate non-linearities produced by different types of speakers of their emission front. All pass poles are automatically positioned in the intersections and have different colors for the first and second order. I can continuously vary the phase and only for the second order type, the Q factor. The presence of the line in the graph shows the filter is active. By setting phase shift to zero, we deactivate the filter. All pass filters are the only way to align the phase of the speakers that are part of the same emission front, like the three-way system in the front. This is particularly true when the speakers are installed at a significant distance from one another. In addition to the 11 EQ poles, two shelving poles are available in the lower part and upper part of the audio spectrum to refine the total response. With the highlighted brown curve, the software shows us that at this moment we are equalizing the tweeter's emission area. By clicking on mid-range in the left panel, I activate the mid's emission area and the same by clicking on woofers. It's important to understand that all of the 11 EQ poles works on the entire emission front audio spectrum in a correlated way. Working with 11 poles for each channel independently would introduce unpredictable phase rotations difficult to compensate. Sum mode shows the total electrical response of the emissions front that we can compare with the acoustic response measured with a professional RTA tool. The EQ bypass function excludes channel EQ, allowing you to check its contributions on the sound in real time. I can unlink left and right channels to act on them individually. If I decide to link them again, I will receive a system warning showing that channel setting will be lost. We can select subwoofer to check its contribution to the frequency response in the lower part of the spectrum. After we completed the first emission front, we can move on to the other's emission front. We notice some holes produced by the phase rotation at the crossover point introduced by IIR filters. We fix that by rotating the woofer phase by 180 degrees. I work again with the 11 poles using sum and EQ mode. Once the channel equalization is over, I can move on to the main EQ acting on all output channels. The total frequency response is modeled according to the listening taste and preferred music genre. I can deactivate main EQ in real time. Finally, we can choose between slow or fast roll-off PCM filter response according to personal tastes. Since this function acts only on the processor DAC, it is only available when we use the Virtuoso analog outputs, while it disappears if we use the AD Link digital link bus in a full DA HD chain. At the end of the EQ tuning, it is always advisable to save the setup and finalize it in the processor's memory in order not to lose the settings.